Toby, trucks and trouble. Dear friends, trucks are silly things. They rattle, bang, and chatter to each other so much that they can never hear what their engine says. Even if they did, they probably wouldn't take any notice. They pushed Mavis into a lorry, and they made extra work for Toby and Percy while she was being mended. But on the other hand, perhaps they're not all bad. After all, they did teach Bolstrode a lesson. See what you think. The author, Christopher Audrey. Mavis and the Lorry Mavis is a diesel engine belonging to the Farquhar Quarry Company. She is in charge of the stone trucks at the quarry, and when Toby is busy, or there are too many trucks for him to manage by himself, she is allowed to bring a loaded train down to Farquhar. She enjoys this, because the journey gives her a chance to stretch her wheels. Besides, she sometimes finds it dull up at the quarry, with no one to talk to but trucks. For most of the way, the line runs beside a road. Mavis is always very careful, especially at the place where Thomas once had an argument with a policeman. A road crosses the line here, and though there are warning signs, some of the cars and lorries come round the corner much too fast. They make Mavis nervous. There'll be an accident one day, Mavis's driver often says as they pass the place, and she feels sure that he is right. One day, Mavis was late. The trucks had been in all the wrong places, and she had to waste time sorting them out. As she came down the line, she felt them surge against her. Stop pushing, she growled. They neared the crossing, and Mavis saw a lorry coming towards them. He'll stop when he sees us, she thought. But she couldn't know that the lorry driver was new to the island. The last thing he expected to see there was a train. Much too fast, the lorry approached the corner. Too late, the driver realized it was sharper than he expected. He swerved, and at that moment, he saw Mavis halfway across the road. He braked hard and swung the steering wheel, but it was too late. The lorry's front bumper just caught Mavis's cowcatcher, and the lorry left the road and skidded into a ditch. With a loud crash, it fell onto its side. Mavis, who had already stopped, watched in horror. Ouch! she exclaimed. That hurts! I didn't push him over! she cried in alarm. Her driver laughed and jumped down. No one's blaming you, he said. But I hope the lorry driver is all right. The lorry's right-hand door was deep in the ditch. But now, a figure could be seen struggling to climb out at the other side. Mavis's driver went to help. Is that a train? the man demanded. It certainly is, laughed Mavis's driver. You must be new here, not to have seen us before. Mavis's front was bent, but she wasn't badly hurt. Her owner sent her to be mended, and asked the fat controller if he could borrow Toby while she was away. What about the trucks down here, sir? Toby asked anxiously. The fat controller nodded. I'm afraid it'll mean more work for you, Percy, he said. But Toby's side plates make him the only engine who can go up there. You remember what happened to Thomas, don't you? And with that, they had to be content. Toby's Seaside Holiday the Fat Controller first met Toby and Henrietta a long time ago, when he was on holiday in East Anglia. Later, when their line was closed, the Fat Controller heard about it, and brought them to Sodor. Before that, Toby had worked at a harbour with several of his brothers. The harbour had been busy, and the engines were kept bustling about. But Toby never really had a chance to exercise his pistons properly, until he had his own line to run on. One day, Toby was resting alone in the shed at Farquhar. That morning, Percy had been talking about the harbour at Natford. Toby remembered the old days when he had worked at a harbour too. 
I'm too old now to dash about like I did then, he thought, backwards and forwards all day long, between the harbour and the big station, with never any chance of a holiday. But I did go to the seaside once, he remembered, or for a while anyway. His driver and fireman had been so excited when they came to work one day. We've been promised a trip to the seaside, they said. What do you mean? asked Toby. There's a seaside village near here, explained the driver, where they have a festival each year. Lots of people come to it, and one of the organizers thinks it would be a good idea to have a display of engines at the station as an extra attraction. And you, Toby, are to be one of them. Toby went to the shed at the big station. He was given new paint, a new bell, and his brass work was polished until his driver could see himself in it. You haven't looked so smart in years, he said. I nearly didn't recognize you. They set out for the junction, where the branch line to the village began. As they arrived, a train came in from the branch. The engine was younger than Toby, but he was dirty. His rods clanked and steam leaked from everywhere. That poor engine, said Toby. Can I help pull his next train to the seaside, please? The station master agreed, so Toby was coupled in front. Festival time is the best time of the year, the other engine said. Lots of extra trains and visitors. I expect you'll be able to stand on the long carriage siding. They soon reached the seaside station, where the station master came out to meet them. He was surprised to see Toby. He stared, frowned, and went away shaking his head. The next day, Toby was excited. He woke early and saw the sea sparkling in the distance. White birds wailed and swooped overhead, making loud ooing noises. I wonder what they are, thought Toby. I must ask my driver when he comes. But his crew arrived, looking glum. It's all off, Toby, said his driver. They say there's nowhere for you to stand. But... What's wrong with where I am? wailed Toby. I'm not in anyone's way here. It's just an excuse, I reckon, said Toby's driver, lowering his voice. The real trouble is that you're too smart, Toby. They're afraid you show their branch line up. Just then, a door banged. Toby jumped. Wake up, Toby, smiled his driver. Time to get back to work. Toby sighed as he moved from the shed. Well, I did get to go to the seaside, he murmured, even if it wasn't for long. But I think the fat controller would have managed all that festival business much better. Poor Toby. Let's hope he gets another chance to go to the seaside. Bullstrode a few days later, Percy was shunting in the yard at Farquhar when the station master came up. Leave those trucks there, please, Percy, he said. There's an emergency down at the harbor. The fat controller wants you to go and sort it out straight away. But Toby can't, began Percy. Never mind that, said the station master. The fat controller needs you double quick. Leave us to worry about the shunting. He hurried away to make the arrangements. Bolstrode was a barge used for carrying stone. He was a disagreeable barge. Nothing was ever right for him, and he grumbled unceasingly. Trucks grumbled too, but they weren't a patch on Bolstrode. Come on, come on, grumbled Bolstrode rudely one morning. Why aren't you trucks where you should be? How can I be loaded if you dawdle about up there, eh? There's no engine, and we can only go when we're put, retorted the trucks crossly. You're in the wrong place, not us. They argued for some time, but it made no difference. Bolstrode was in the wrong place, and he wasn't due to leave until the next day. But he wasn't going to let a little thing like that stop him complaining. When Percy arrived, Bolstrode was sulking, and the trucks were annoyed with him. Our stone is for Bolstrode, they said. Please put us into the siding so that we can load him and be rid of him as soon as possible. 
The line slopes down to the harbor. Percy pulled the trucks a little way up the hill, clear of the points. As he stopped, one of the trucks' brakes slipped on. When Percy began to push, the truck started with a jerk, and a coupling broke. Four loose trucks, heavy with stone, gathered speed. Help! Help! They wailed. Ashanta bravely tried to stop them, but it only broke his pole. The trucks rattled along the quay, straight towards Bullstrode, unexpecting at the end. Bullstrode heard a rattle and a shout or two, but he could see nothing. The first he knew of anything wrong was when four loaded stone trucks shot one by one off the end of the quay to bury themselves in his hole. He exclaimed, but anything else was lost in a gurgle as a truck burst a hole in his hole and water began to pour in. Bolstrode experienced an awful sinking feeling. Save me! He spluttered. I'm drowning! But Bolstrode didn't drown. As chance would have it, the tide was out, so he couldn't go right under the water. The trucks were upset of losing some of their friends, but were very little bothered about Bullstrode. Nothing but a nuisance he was, they said to each other, always barging in and moaning about not being loaded fast enough. They sniggered. This time, he got his load faster than he bargained for. Serves him right if you ask us. Percy was kept busy for some time afterwards, clearing up the mess. When the remains of the trucks had been lifted out of the water, he took them to the scrapyard, while workmen rescued what stone they could. As for Bolstrode, when everything else had been cleared, his remains were towed to a nearby beach, where they could do no harm. Now, children play happily among the wreckage. If Bolstrode is still grumbling, as I expect he is, the children take no notice. Toby takes the road. While Percy was away, Terence had to do all of the shunting in the yard. Adaptable, he boasted. That's what me owner says I am. Go anywhere, do anything. That's me. You take my advice and scrap your rails. Broaden your outlook, like me. Pooh, said Percy. Me? Plow a field? I prefer to stay on my rails, thank you. Steam engines did plow once upon a time, Terence chuckled, and ran on roads. The engines remembered Trevor, and had to admit that Terence was right. Repairs to Mavis took longer than expected, and Toby became used to trundling up to the quarry each morning. Because of Toby's small water tank, his driver and fireman had arranged with the quarry manager that they should bring loaded trucks down to Farquhar at lunchtime instead of later in the day. It saved time too, for Toby would otherwise have done an extra journey to fill up his water tank. This way, he'd deliver the trucks and get water in one visit. Time passed, and the weather became colder with hard frosts during the night. They didn't worry Toby. His fire kept him nice and warm, and he puffed happily to and fro, arranging the trucks, taking them down to the yard, and bringing back empty ones. One night, it was particularly cold. The ground froze solid, and even Toby felt chilly. He shivered as he left the shed and set out light engine along the line towards the quarry. When the ground freezes, it swells. At the road crossing, where Mavis had had her accident, the frost had swollen earth in the rut beside the rails so much that Toby's wheels were lifted clean off the track. There was a crunching noise, a rumbling, and Toby began to shudder. He was horrified. Oh, uh, he exclaimed. What's happening? The line here curves away towards the quarry, but Toby, with no rails to guide his wheels round, simply went straight on. Toby was not going fast. Whoa there, Toby, said his driver at once, and put on the brakes as fast as he dared. Shakily, Toby came to a stop, with all six wheels firmly on the roadway. 
Oh dear, said Toby, looking at the grass verge in front of him. No one. His fireman jumped down. No problem, he said. With care, we'll have you back on the rails in no time. I don't see how, said Toby sadly. Directed by the fireman, the driver carefully reversed Toby along the rut his wheels had just made. At last, with a thud and a jolt, Toby felt the rails safely beneath his wheels once more. He heaved a sigh of relief. Well done, Toby, said his fireman. Now, I'll spread a few hot ashes from your fire along there, so that this doesn't happen again. Then we can get safely onto the quarry, and no one will be any wiser. But they reckoned without the fat controller. When Mavis was home after being mended, he came to see the engines. What's this I hear, Toby? He asked. Trying to be a traction engine, were you? Toby blushed, but the fat controller wasn't cross. Toby told him about Terence. The fat controller laughed. If I were you, he said, I should leave the roads for what they were made for. You stay on the rails. You'll find them much more comfortable. Toby the tram engine was quick to agree. <laughs>